The sound just played represents the mixed frequency murmur of mitral insufficiency that is auscultated at the left caudal sternal border. The murmur, which begins early in systole, increases in duration as the condition progresses. The intensity also increases with the severity of the condition and is often so loud that it is accompanied by a palpable precordial vibration or thrill. Listen to another recording of mitral insufficiency. The holosystolic murmur is so loud and prolonged that the second heart sound is obliterated, giving the impression of only one prolonged sound. In heart failure, the ventricle fails to eject its full complement of blood. When atrial blood flows into an overfilled failing ventricle, the normally inaudible third heart sound is intensified and becomes audible. The second heart sound may be muffled by the loud murmur and the third sound is intense enough to be confused with the second heart sound. Listen to the next recording of a dog in heart failure. The third heart sound is a low frequency sound that gives the impression of a thud after the murmur. The loud murmur of mitral insufficiency may radiate dorsally along the left thoracic wall. In severe cases of alveolar insufficiency, the murmur of mitral insufficiency radiates to the right thoracic wall, simulating or intensifying the murmur of tricuspid valve insufficiency. The murmur of tricuspid valve insufficiency mimics that of mitral insufficiency except for location. The systolic hoop, or seagull murmur, is a variation of the holosystolic murmur heard with atrioventricular valvular insufficiency. Notice the high frequency and musical quality of the systolic hoop. The musical hoop varies in frequency and may alternate with the more common mixed holosystolic murmur of mitral insufficiency. Listen to another variation of the systolic hoop.
systolic murmur, often confused with that of mitral insufficiency, is caused by anemia. The diminished viscosity of the blood results in increased turbulence producing a systolic murmur. This murmur is of higher frequency than that of mitral insufficiency and is usually limited to early and mid-systole. The first and second heart sounds are clearly heard. The anemic murmur is loudest at the mitral position and unlike that of mitral insufficiency, rarely radiates to other portions of the thorax.